So as you can see down here is the link to the Spotify playlist. I'm gonna also post in the YouTube chat. So if you can, please click on the, uh, or type in the playlist and you can play it along with me. It's not required. You can listen to anything you want, but this is yoga. First panel of BabsCon online. Welcome so much, you guys. So to get started, this is going to be a 50 minute practice. So what you're going to need is a chair. So if you're at your desk, you can totally just sit here and be fine the whole time. And if you have a mat or the floor or something comfy, you can sit there as well. There may or may not be a lot of actual text chatting. If you are comfortable just sitting by your computer and listening and doing some stretches there, feel free to keep typing away. If not, say any last hellos to your friends and then get settled into your comfy place, wherever that may be. This is Mod Pie themed My Little Pony yoga, and it's gonna be based on grounding. So as we all know, Maud is one of the Pi sisters. They're bigs into rocks and earth and all of the elements of it. So what we're gonna be doing today is focusing on those elements. And first off, props. If you have a blanket, you might wanna have a blanket nearby, otherwise just a chair. And if you do have a pet rock, like my little boulder here, Feel free to bring your pet rock and have them practice. They will probably be better than you. This is for all abilities. No matter where you're at, the secret to yoga is that it's just about being. Being on your mat, being in your chair. There is no right, there is no wrong, there are no comparisons between poses, okay? You're gonna be doing whatever your body can do today. That may be a lot, it may be a little, it may surprise you, you may be like, oh, okay. And that's okay. Even I am not going to be perfect. And as we all know, we're not flawless, right? This is going to be based on slow flow yoga. I am Riftwing Designs, and you may know me as Brass Knuckles. <laughs> I'm now taking yoga teacher training, and this is part of my journey. And it's really cool to be able to tie panels with yoga into the actual practice. So to get started, remember, don't go beyond where you want to today. And again, change anything you want. You can always come back to your easy seat, whether it's on the chair or on your mat, and just come back to your breathing. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is sit up straight, feel your good posture, roll those shoulders back and down, and just notice where your breathing is. Notice how your posture is. A lot of this is mindfulness. So thinking about, is your breathing shallow or deep? Are you yawning still because you just woke up? Maybe get a yawn and a stretch in. Do what feels good for you. How is the heat of your breath? Can you feel it coming in your nose? Or if you have a stuffy nose like me with allergies, maybe you feel that in your throat. We're going to start to come to a breathing exercise. So the first thing this says is relax and breathe. So in breathing, now that we've noticed where we're at, we're going to start to balance it. Focus as you breathe in to a count of four, two, three, four. Then try and exhale for four, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Exhale, two three, four. At your own pace, continue to breathe in and out evenly. If your count is longer today, go longer. If your count is slower, that's fine too. This is like Bob Ross yoga. There is no wrong way to do it. Be the tree. Be the happy little tree that's going sideways or that maybe just appears or maybe you're just a little old root today. Whatever that is works for you. I told our Discord chat that they can also go in through there. Looks like you guys are good. Keep breathing. Maybe now you want to start pausing at the beginning of your breathing 
and then pause at the end as well. Hold the pauses in between both your inhales and your exhales. And as it feels comfortable to you, come back to your normal breath. This is one of those calming exercises. Another thing that you can do is focus on belly breathing. So if you want to continue the count to go right ahead, you can keep doing that the whole time and no one will judge you. The best part about this is that you guys are behind the screen and I can't see any of you. So you just have to look at me. And even if you don't want to look at me, turn off the screen, keep the sound on. It doesn't bother me at all. So for belly breathing, you put one or two hands on your belly and put one on your chest if you like, whatever's comfortable for you. In human anatomy, the belly is supposed to expand when you breathe because your diaphragm, when you exhale, is pushing up. On the inhale, it reaches down and on the exhale, it pushes out. Maybe experiment with how it feels with you today. When you breathe deeply, can you pull it into your belly? Can you push it out? Couple more breaths here. Remember, there's no wrong way to do this. If you've never done belly breathing before, you're not gonna be a master today, but perhaps this will guide you on your path to someday become a master of your own breathing. And if you're already there, be one with your breath for three more breaths. Okay, come back to stillness. We're gonna do the traditional opening of a yoga session. So if you've never been in a yoga class before, again, get in that easy seat. You can have your hands on your shins, or if you're sitting, you can have your heart hands at heart center. This is actually called a mudra, M-U-D-R-A, which is a symbolic gesture or seal. So if you've ever seen like Naruto or some of the crazy ones where they do like rooster, crow, hen, and they do their hands and all the really funky seals, those are kind of in the same vein, right? It's a symbolic hand gesture. And it is a sign of greeting. It's a sign of inner peace and calm. And yes, it is similar to the prayer. If you are religious and wish to make a prayer at this point, you can, but I'm going to keep it as an intention. At the beginning of yoga classes, we call an intention to focus. So if you get lost in your own thoughts, if you get confused, if you need to sit down and take a break, come back to your intention and your breathing. That's the secret. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is use a quote from the best gift ever. So if you'd like, you can close your eyes or maybe in invite a soft gaze over your nose. Our intention today is don't rock it until you try it. Which of course, Maud said, today we're gonna cultivate through grounding. We're gonna try it and you may not be a, a master of rock after this, but it's a start. <clears throat> If you'd like to make another intention, please do that now. And together we're gonna to take a deep breath in and then just let it go. And one more breath in to seal and exhale. You can also really have loud breaths. Anything's allowed here. Now we're gonna start by doing some relaxation. So if you're up in your chair, again, invite a comfortable seat. Maybe not lean back in your chair, maybe come to the front a little bit. And you wanna either keep your hands at your sides or somewhere comfortable for you. If you've got armrests, go right ahead, whatever feels good for you, but focus on your posture. If you are on the floor or your own mat, we're gonna start here again, comfy seat. If you have that blanket and the floor starts to feel bad, you can put that underneath and sit on the edge and it'll give you a little lift to your hips. So as we're sitting here, Beginning our grounding practice, the first thing we have to do is notice the ground. So close your eyes here if it's comfortable and feel where you're touching the ground. Is it your feet, your backside, your sits bones? Where are you grounding? Continue to focus and if you'd like, you can think back to your breathing here. Can you adjust your seat now to make yourself more comfortable and also notice more of the grounding?
and now flutter your eyes open. Notice where you're at. We're going to start to have movement. First, we're going to start from the top down. So we're going to start with the neck. Invite gentle movement into your neck. Do not start with a full neck roll. Safety first. Never do anything in yoga that causes any pain. Back away and accept that that is where you will be today. Again, find your happy place. There's no wrong way to do this. If you're rocking your head back and forth here, maybe you want to rock your head to one side. Bring that ear to your shoulder. My favorite thing to do here is to extend that same hand on the side your head is leaning towards and gently place it on your head to add a little weight. Breathe into it here. Maybe you reach the other hand out and see if that adds a stretch to your shoulders here. One more breath in. Feel the relaxation in the neck. Feels so good this early, huh? And slowly release the hand if it's up. Come back to stillness here. Draw your hand, head back to center. And then slowly go the other direction. Again, option if you'd like to take your hand above your head. Gently rest your hand on it just for a little extra pressure. And maybe see about a counterbalance on the other side. And if that doesn't work for you, again, you can just keep rolling your neck. You can sit still, go back to your breathing, whatever works today. You guys are doing great. This is yoga. That's all there is to it. All right, come back to center. Release your hands if you have them up. Now let's roll those shoulders, Ooh, right? I like to talk about rolling shoulders as if you had a square <laughs> in your shoulder. So roll up back really see how far back your shoulders can go don't go fast go slow roll them down roll the shoulder blades down your spine and then pull your shoulders forward it doesn't have to be big it can be small feel all four corners of your shoulders yeah great and if you like to roll them a different way you go roll them your own way it's whatever works for you in yoga there's also balance so if you have been going one direction, stop the rotation and then go the other way. So for me, it's forward, down, back, and up. Forward, down, back, and then up. Again, at your own pace. Do a couple more here. Ooh, and let me tell you, my left shoulder is definitely happy we're doing this already. All right, come back to stillness here. The next thing we're gonna do is what we're gonna call the wave, right? So the first thing you're gonna do is inhale and raise your hands up. Now lower your shoulder blades. Then reach up and let, let your shoulders come close to your ears and then pull them down and see the difference. You see the difference here when you go up, it really closes, you don't want that. You wanna roll your shoulder blades back and down. If you have an injury with your shoulders, this may or may not work. If you cannot raise your hands above, Raise them as high as it'll go. Maybe it's here, or maybe you put your hands on your chest, or maybe it's just more comfortable this way. Again, your practice, you do what you want. If your hands are up here, focus on there being like an imaginary ball between your hands that grounds you down. Feel the weight, draw those shoulders down. Feel again where your hips and your feet are touching the ground. Maybe invite some swaying movement here. If your body wants to do some big circles carrying that boulder, woo! Start to do that. Now look wherever your neck is comfortable. If you want to look up, look up, but usually looking down or having a neutral neck is most comfortable. What I say about balance at some point, come back to center. Ooh, lift that boulder the other way. Yeah. Really feel it. Maybe you want big circles or maybe you just want a little delicate, a little delicate dance. Again, your practice. Now, this thing is heavy. So I'm going to do another inhale. On the exhale, let your arms float down. And then do a couple little flowing movements. If you ever need to do a little Muppet Wiggle, do that Muppet Wiggle, okay? This is your practice. Breathing on the inhale. Exhaling as you're going down. Up on the inhale. Exhale, go down. Now the wave, ready? So you're gonna inhale both hands up forward. Exhale, do a little twist as far as you want to one side. If you want, you can plant your hands, maybe get a little crunch in the body. Inhale, come up. Exhale, other side. 
Again, wherever it feels good for you. Maybe on the inhale, you go up, and then you exhale and you just rest your hands on your legs. It's the same thing on the chair. Can continue your flow. If you're in the chair, it's the same thing. You can even, if you're in the chair, use the back of the chair to deepen that twist. The pace is up to you. Dial up to you. This is your practice. I'm just here to help out where I can. Okay, one more cycle. Get both sides down. Good job, you guys. Next, we're going to do cat cow. So there's three options for this. The first one is if you're seated, whether it's in the chair or on the mat, I'm gonna turn just to demonstrate. For cat, you exhale, arch your back like you're a cat. Inhale to cow, shine your heart forward, stretch, pull the shoulder blades back, maybe look up. And then arch back, exhale. Inhale as you shine forward. Now, if this is in your practice, you can also do on all fours the same thing. Exhaling, reaching your back up. Inhaling, shining your heart forward, lowering your back, arching and looking up. If it's uncomfortable for your knees, again, you can put your knees on the blanket and give yourself a little more padding. Again, it's what's comfortable for you. Invite some movement into your cat cows here. Maybe again, those hips like your shoulders with the boulder. Maybe your hips want to do some circles with your cat cows. Maybe you look from side to side, wag that dog, right? Whatever works for you here. You're going to hear that a lot. Maybe this is a coffee game where I say it and you take a little coffee, right? Okay. Come back to stillness, whichever way you're doing your cat cows. And the next thing we're going to do now that we've gotten our spine warmed up is we're going to go into the shoulders. So we already did a little bit of waving. Now we're going to do some short shoulder rolls, right? So the first thing we're going to do is just take your arms, whether it's one or both. Maybe we'll do one first. That sounds good. Raise it up. And you can do circles with your arms. You can do big circles and do small circles. You can do front circles. You can do side circles. You can might hear some clicking. I definitely hear some clicking. And again, no pain. Go both directions. And then go to the other side. See how different this side feels. Maybe your rotation's not so good like me because I had a little injury a couple months ago. This is part of my rehab, so congratulations. <laughs> and maybe, maybe because of that, I just do small circles. But remember, go the opposite direction now. Come back to your breathing. You're doing slow, deep breaths. Okay, bring your hands back down. Come back to our grounding. Has your seat changed? If you're cross-legged, maybe you bring that other leg to the top now. See how different this feels. If you're seated, maybe you shift a little bit. All right, we're going to do my favorite, my second favorite, right? <laughs> then we're going to do the chicken dance now, right? So you take your hands, put your shoulders, hands on your shoulders, okay? And you can do the normal chicken dance. You can do some circles. Do whatever works for you. Remember, you're not on video here. Do what works to get those shoulders moving. The hands should just be lightly touching just so that you're rotating through your elbows. Draw the circles with your elbows. And again, maybe you only do one wing at a time. That's fine too. Your practice. Remember to go the opposite direction. One more rotation if you need to get back. Balance things out. Come back to stillness. Breathing here. Again, this is it. This is yoga, guys. You're doing it. Good job. Next, cactus arms. Inhale, raise your hands up. Exhale. Bend your elbows, lower your arms to get goalpost arms. Your thumbs can be facing backwards or maybe your palms are facing forwards. Rotate your wrists and see what feels good here. Your shoulder blades should feel some tension as you're pulling backwards. So you should not be like really overextending here. You should keep them in line with your body like you're getting sandwiched between a piece of glass. Hold this here, breathing into it. Maybe feel that grounding again. 
If you'd like here, you can always stand and do some squats with your hands here. And that is arms open and then you can raise them up kind of like little jumping jacks. That's a bonus. Do what feels good for you. And if your hands are up, let them down. I think you guys have done a good job. Maybe roll yourself out again. We're going to do one more round of cactus arms. Inhale up, exhale down. Again, try and roll the shoulders back and down, keeping your arms in line, breathing. How's your neck feel? Maybe you can do some neck rolls too. And exhale, let them flop. Maybe you do your Muppet dance. Okay, next. I'm just going to loosen myself up here. So you're going to lift one hand up on the inhale. Exhale, put your hand behind your back. This is going to be your shoulder stretch. So you take your opposite head and grab that elbow and just pull it in. If you're used to it, like the baseball stretch, right? That's all you're doing here. Just grabbing it, pulling it down. If you have it in your practice, you can also take that opposite arm, reach behind and do a bind. One side may not be as good as the other. In fact, let's go release that, come back to stillness, and we'll try it on the other side. Raise your arm up, hand behind the back, elbow up, opposite hand grabs elbow to pull it in. Or perhaps, again, you turn around. Well, I turn around, <laughs> you stay still. And we make a bind here. Whatever works for you. Stretch into it a little bit more. And then release. Again, do your Muppet dance, do your relaxation. Everything looks good here. Yep, Marble Pie is definitely hiding. Doesn't want to be seen, but totally awesome. Hydrate, even on online conventions. All right, guys. Next, inhale. Hands up in front of you like you're reaching forward. Interlace the fingers if this works for you. Rotate them out, and you're going to be doing a shoulder stretch here. Remember to roll your shoulders back and down, reaching out with the palms of the hand, shoulders out. Do not, don't hyperextend the elbows. Just see how it feels. Maybe here you invite a little forward fold in. Or maybe you do some cat cows. See how it feels for you. And then inhale, try and raise your hands up as much as your body wants to go today. Stretching up, pushing your palms towards the sky now. Feel the grounding as your body pushes down and up at the same time. Opposites. Exhale, let both hands down like your sun ray coming down to the, to the ground. Plant your hands. I like this. Plant your hands right here. And if you're in a chair, just put them on your seat. Feel how that feels. Maybe you've got a little bit of a fold in you. Maybe you sit up. Put your hands behind you. Find a way to sit with your hands grounded. Close your eyes, come back to your breath. Feel the grounding here. On the inhale, hands come forward. And then just give yourself a hug. <laughs> That's it, self-care, guys. Maybe do a little forward fold. Mm, big squeeze, and then let it out. All right, that's it for arms. We've got another 20 minutes to go. Let's start with our wrists and hands. So the first thing we're going to do here, I like to do the Macarena, right? So your hands are out. Flip the hand over. Opposite hand comes on top of those fingers. Pull the fingers down lightly. Now this is a great one for the computer use for your carpal tunnel. So you're just pulling your fingertips down gently. Now if you put your hand over the thumb, it gives a different stretch. Or perhaps if you have a wall, you can press in here too. Whatever works for you. Then release. Opposite hand goes up. Flip the palm. Other hand comes up onto the palm. Gently pulling the fingers down to get the opposite stretch here. Breathing into it. Roll the shoulders back and down. Shoulders are very important. <laughs> okay. Good one. Now, if you have your hands down, bring them inhale up, shoulder uh, wrist rolls. <laughs> so you can do them here, you can do them above your head, wherever feels good for you. Roll both wrists one direction and then the other. If they crack, that's what they want to do today. Again, if it's not comfortable, don't do it. Come back to your breathing. 
Now we're going to turn our palms up again and rev the motorcycle. Like pull your wrists in, keeping your arms straight, shoulders back, and just curl your wrists. This may feel weird. It's a muscle we don't tend to stretch. There you go, guys. A couple more. If it feels good for you, if not, you can go back and come back to stillness. Lower those hands down. Take a deep breath. Feel the grounding. Oops, I uncrossed my opposite cross here. All right, next is going to be fingers. Take one hand, raise it up, wave hi to everybody, even though they can't see you. Let's feel the connection in the group here, guys. You're awesome. All right, so with your hand up, start to articulate, start to move your fingers. I'll come up for this one here. So you got your fingers. Do you wiggle them much? I'm going to start with their thumb. Thumbs up, just like before with a good sound check. Now try and move your thumb out, up, right? Like you're hitchhiking and then doing a little dance. Can you do that? Can you do thumb circles? <laughs> it's whatever works for you. Remember to go both ways. All right, <clears throat> next one. Index finger, same thing. A little inchworm. Okay, and because this is a PG one, you know what's coming next. I'm going to do both fingers. If you want to do a single finger, go ahead. Up and down. <laughs> you guys are great. Okay, then this one's difficult. Ring finger. I can't barely even lift mine. Can you get yours to move a lot? Can you, can you lift it up? I feel like your body wants to move today. And then pinky, right? Pinky, woof. That one bombed. <laughs> See how your pinky wants to move today. And then do them all again. Shake it out. Give it a good little shake. And if you want here, what you can do is there's this little web right here. Take your pincher fingers, pinch gently here, and feel the meat <laughs> of the web of your hand and just give it a little massage. Not only is this muscle not massaged a lot, but it can also help if you're ever like feeling like seasick, like I get seasick a lot. So if you rub this, it's supposed to help with turbulence and getting queasy. It's your secret trivia for the day. You can do this all the time. I do it a lot in meetings. The other thing you can do is when you have your hands done, just like you're washing your hands with this COVID thing, maybe you just give a little stretch into the web using your other hand. Like that, or maybe like this. Ooh, that's good for the wrist. Experiment guys, this is your practice. What feels good for you? Okay, then let it go. That's one hand. Guess what? You got one more to go. So here we go. Hands up, right? Move it around. See how this one feels compared to the one you just gave the massage, right? A little different. Okay. Thumbs up. Do it again. Out and over. People are going to be looking at this video like, what are you guys doing? Or what is Riftwing doing? <laughs> I guess this is not you. <laughs> All right, next one. Index finger. There we go. Maybe you do some circles too. Whatever your fingers want to do today. Maybe a little waggle. <laughs> oh, you guys are great. Uh, thanks, Sky Pause. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yoga is supposed to be fun. If it's too serious, if you're comparing yourself, next finger. If you're comparing yourself to others, it's not the way it should be, right? Oh, Althos. I'm glad that your partner is discovering the need for more stretching, right? This is just gentle. It's whatever works for you guys. Thank you so much for the comments. All right, ring finger. Again, see, <laughs> see if yours is better than mine because it's, it's a struggle, guys. I can't even get my middle finger down. <laughs> this is great. Okay, pinky finger. Here we go. Okay, now we've done all the fingers. Feel how that feels. Maybe give it a good shake your roo Shake it out. Okay, and now we're going to do on the other side our web. Take your pincher, grab the web. Ooh. Again, as much pressure or as little pressure as you want here. Just kind of massage it. You could even put both of them together and try that. So, again, whatever works for you guys. <sighs> Remember to breathe. 
Okay, webbing. Maybe it'll stretch like this. Oh, my camera focus. <laughs> it's just like you're glowing. Or maybe you do one of these again. It's whatever works for you. I'll give you a couple more seconds to play around with your fingers here. And then shake them out. Good job, guys. All right, back to your easy seat. Ah, so we've done our fingers. Guess what's next? <laughs> Moving down. So we've got our back. We've already done our back warm-ups. We're going to do a fold. So again, if you like to stand and you want to do a standing fold here, maybe ragdoll and hang and a couple other fancy yoga terms, go ahead. If you're seated, all you got to do here, again, easy seat, fold over on the exhale, fold over, again, however far you need. If you want to hold yourself up, you can. If you can come down here on the chair, you can use your hands to grab the seat and um, the legs and deepen that stretch breathing as you're folding over. If you're seated, you can do a cross-legged fold. And again, if you're standing, do what feels good for you. Breathe here. If you're down on the floor and your hands don't feel good stretched above you, maybe try putting them to your side or behind you. This is your practice, guys. Breathing here. One more breath. Feel the grounding. On an inhale, come back up slowly. Now we're going to do our toes and our ankles. So if you are on the ground, you may want to go to a chair or you can just do it with your legs out in front of you or you can do it standing. Your option. I'm going to go from the chair because that's easiest for me to demonstrate here. So we are going to start off by doing um, our leg lifts. So you can pull your knee to your chest if you're standing or if you're seated again. You want a foot coming off the ground and then kind of pull it into your chest. Give it a hug with your hands interlaced around it. And then you can start to do like little hip circles guiding with the knee. For more of a stretch, flex the toes. Pull the toes in and then do the stretch. And remember, if you circle one way, go the other way. Don't forget to breathe, everyone. Yes, thank you, Alto. Deep inhales through your nose. If you can hear your own breathing, that is a specific type of yoga breath. Good comments, guys. All right, lower it down. Do the other side. Lift it up. Hug your knee in. Maybe invite some circles here. Again, remember, if you flex that foot, pull the toes in, you'll get a different stretch. Maybe this is enough for you guys. If you want to do more, do more. We're going to do crosses over our body later, but feel free to put them in now if that's in your practice. Hug it in. Maybe you even fold over. There you go, guys. All right. Plant your feet back down. If you're standing, this is going to be a little more difficult. If you're on the ground flat, this is going to be fun. Either way, you're going to try and lift your heels, right? So if you're on the ground, good luck. Maybe just point your toes. If you're standing, try and go tippy toes. I need to back up so you can see my toes. So you're lifting up like a little ballet. This is great on airplanes if we ever get to fly again. Good stretch. And then, oh, wait. What if you tuck the toes in, then lift the heels, then plant, lift the toes, plant, lift the heels. Like a little rock because this is grounding. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part about the Mod Pie themed yoga here, guys. All right, maybe you do some ankle rolls now. Maybe you lift one foot. Just roll that ankle around. See if it pops or cracks, if it wants to talk to you today. And then don't forget to do the other side. Okay, good. Looks like most of the Discord chat's over here. Okay, come back to stillness. Now, we're going to do the same thing we do with our fingers, with our toes. I'll try and do it seated and hold my foot up. You guys can see my beautiful putsies, right? So for here, you do not have to hold your foot up. Just look at your foot, one foot at a time. Try and move your big toe. Just the big toe. Can you fold it over? Oh gosh, I can do it the other way. I can do a toe up instead of a thumbs up. Can you do that? You don't have to. Just see if your body can. Have you ever tried? Maybe try and spread those toes really wide. 
I feel so weird going like this, guys. <laughs> Spread your toes wide. There you go. There's my toe up. Ooh, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Just wiggle your toes. See what you can do with your toes. And then the other side. Can you do your big toe up? Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. Let's stretch them wide. Give them a wiggle. Do what feels good. <laughs> we just said the Pinkie Pie finger stretch. Oh, that's funny, Byron. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So if you are on the ground or if you're standing, you can actually come into another toe stretch here. So you have your feet down. Keep those toes planted. Lift the ankles. Come to kneeling. And then sit back on your toes. Okay? Your toes, feet can be together if that feels better. This may feel like a really, really intense stretch. That's okay. If it's too intense, stop. And if you're just seated, maybe you're just doing a couple more ankle rolls or come back to your breathing. I really like this toe stretch. At first, it's really difficult, but the more you do it, the easier it is. And I, I think it makes your feet stronger. Foot strength. Then come down to your hands and let the feet go and just kick the toes like you're paddling. This one also feels really good. Maybe you just kind of feel those feet. Again, this is grounding, so you got to take care of your little putsies. Okay, then come back to stillness. We're going to do another set of folds. If you're on your chair, you're just going to do a forward fold. If you're on the ground, we're going to do a wide-legged fold here. So you're taking your feet out wide. <laughs> and then you're just going to inhale and straighten up and exhale, fold here. Fold however much your body can. Mine does not. Yours might be able to go all the way down. Good. If you want to grab onto your ankles, shins, heels, that's fine. But you want to keep the spine straight. And loose neck. Breathing here. Maybe it's your normal forward fold or maybe you just come back to stillness. Give it a try for a couple more seconds. Okay. I said we were going to do some crosses here. So we're going to come to do crosses next. If you're seated, I'll demonstrate that first. All you do, yeah, you take your leg up. And you could just cross it over and this would be enough. You can even do a forward fold here. Maybe, oh, maybe first we'll experiment with just moving our hip around again. But then you're going to take that ankle, place it above your opposite knee. Not on the knee, next to it. And you can use your hand to hold the ankle and your knee that's up and press into that. This is called a figure four. And if this is good for you, you can do it in the chair. If you are on the ground, you have the option for pigeon if it's in your practice. If not, it's the same thing. I'm going to do it backwards here so you guys can see what's happening. So you're sitting, pull your knees in, and you're actually going to be lowering to the ground. And you put that ankle over your knee. I learned how to do this my last stream. <laughs> ankle over your knee. You can push here and that's enough. Or again, you can pull it in. For those of you in pigeon, get comfortable. Keep your hips level and square. Use a prop under your hip if you need to. If you're on the ground here, maybe you again invite a little more pull. And if you're in a chair, keep breathing. All the physicians keep breathing. After this, if you guys remember, I'd love to hear which of the options you've taken, or maybe you try a couple of them. So again, whatever works for you. Happy little pigeon. Slowly, if you're pulling yourself in, release. If you're in pigeon, start to raise yourself up. Do any additional stretches you'd like. If you're seated, uncross your legs. We're going to do it on the other side. And I will do musical chairs. You guys go at your own pace. If you know how to get there, go right ahead. Opposite angle up on that leg. Hand on the ankle and knee, breathing. Again, you can invite a fold here, or if this is enough, you got it. Pigeon, same thing. Get into it and out of it comfortably. Keep those hips nice and level. And if you're on the ground with me, keep yourself low, cross over the other side. Maybe that's enough, or maybe you lift your leg up. 
grab that opposite leg. You can use your elbow on that opposite knee and just push into it. It's figure four, guys. Modified pigeon. Breathing here. Couple more breaths. Again, inviting movement if you need that movement. Never feeling any pain. If you are in the pigeon, pull yourself back up. If you're on your back, let that bind go. Come back down and you've got your feet down. You're laying down now. This is great. We're almost done. Can you believe it? We only got like another five, ten minutes left. <laughs> All right. So we're going into our back stretches here. If you are in your chair, you're going to be going back to your cat cows and your forward folds. If you're on the ground with me, I'm going to move my blankie. First thing we're going to do, actually I'll go this way, is you're going to be laying here. Feet are up, knees bent, hands, palms down. This is the grounding. We're coming back to grounding. Your legs may feel different now after those pigeons. On the inhale, pull your knees in, give them a hug again. Now we're doing both at the same time. Keep your eyes open or you can close them. If you want, you can hug tightly. You can even curl into a ball. Or maybe you invite the rock and roll. From here, lower the feet both down at the same time using your abs, core work here. If there's anything else in your practice that you want to do as far as core work on your back, go right ahead. If not, we're going to go into butterfly. So from here, your feet stay together. Maybe you walk them a little ways out, and you're going to flop both of your knees open into a diamond shape. Maybe they don't go all the way down. You can put your hands around your pelvis to feel those hip bones. You want to feel the grounding. You do not have to go all the way down. But if you invite that, the further out your legs are, the more it'll go down, and the more you pull it in, the more intense the stretch. If you're on your chair, an option for diamond here, you can do it just by opening up. Or maybe, again, you just do one hip at a time. See how far open and close you can make that door. If you're in diamond on the ground, come back to your breathing. Maybe put your hands in your belly and feel that grounding. If you're in your chair, try the other side, opening and closing that hip door. Breathe in here. A couple more seconds. If you're in your chair, come back to stillness. If you're laying on your back, a couple more breaths. You notice how Boulder here is still doing amazing? Got every stretch, right? Because that's what yoga is, whatever you want it to be. So if you're in your diamond, maybe you just use your abs and your abductors to raise your legs, or if that's difficult, you can get your knees back up, whichever way works for you. We're gonna do some quick twists. So you're gonna put one foot down, extend it, and maybe flex that heel. Pull those toes and feel how that feels. Then on the inhale, pull the knee in, give it a hug. On the exhale, let the knee float over. I like to guide it with my hand. Keep your shoulders grounded. You do not have to do a deep twist. If this is as far as you can go, that's enough. If this is it, keep the shoulders grounded. If you can go further, remember, keep the shoulders down. Breathe into the stretch. On an inhale, you can let it go a little bit. On the exhale, maybe go a little further. Breathing here. In the chair, you're doing your legs crossed. I'm sure you figured this out already, right? Legs crossed, and you can just do that deep twist. Keep your neck tall and high if you're in your chair. Keep your spine straight. Good job, guys. On an inhale, bring your knee back up. Hug it in again. Thank it for its work. If you like, you can let it tip out the other way. And do another hip stretch, or if not, stretch both your legs out. We're going to come back into stillness here. Pull both those toes in again. Feel that flex. And then hug in that opposite leg. Flex the toes here. Then let them go. On the 
Exhale, twist the other way. Again, focus on the shoulder, keep it grounded. Breathing here. Again, if there are other twists in your practice you'd like to do, go right ahead. If you're seated, keep tall. Focus on the neck. On an inhale, maybe you'll let it go a little softer. And on the exhale, try and twist deeper. Two more breaths. You got this, guys. Inhale, bring it back up. Give it a hug if you'd like. Maybe you just open that book one more time. Either way. Come back to stillness. Now draw both knees into your chest. One more big hug. Really rock around. Get comfortable in that last little ball. And the next thing we're going to do is our inversions. So quickly, lowering those feet down. If you have anything else to practice, do it now. If not, take your hips that have been grounded. Feel the ground. All you're going to do is lift your pelvis up a little bit. Keep pushing with your hands. Pushing with your feet, head, shoulders. If bridge is in your practice, you can do it here. If not, you got this. Let it down, whichever way you're in. On an inhale, lift maybe just a little higher this time. Exhale, let it go. If you want to do it one more time, go right ahead. If there's anything else you want to do while you're on your back, do it now. We're coming into the final resting pose. Come back, lay on your back, come into stillness. If you're seated, comfy seat. If you're down, it's called corpse pose for a reason. You just gotta lay there with your feet flat, arms can be down or up. I recommend your palms down because this is grounding. Come to stillness, maybe pull a blanket over you to stay warm, this is where you cool down. And it's gonna be silence here if you don't have music playing. So stay laying down or in your comfy seat. Close your eyes and start to relax. Listen to the last few minutes of music. Come back to your breath. And I'm going to give you two minutes of meditation. But by meditation, I mean if you think of something, just let it float away. Acknowledge it and let it go. Come back to stillness. Come back to your intention. Or maybe just focus on the ground. Feel the ground under your head. Relax the center of your eyebrows. Maybe release your tongue from your mouth. Feel your neck and shoulders on the ground. Your shoulder blades and spine. Your hips. Your legs. Where your feet touch the ground on the back of your heel. All of it bringing you back to our theme of grounding. Breathing here. For the next minute, I will leave you in silence or with your music. I will call you out of it. Don't be afraid. Just relax and enjoy these last few moments of grounding. Stay in your quiet pose. I'm going to read you one thing. In the Interplay Collectible Card Game, Maud said, Rocks don't move. Sometimes I don't move. So sometimes I'm like a rock. Return to the rock now for a few more moments of stillness. 
When life's got you down, keep your head up. You can see the ground any time. I want to leave you with a thought that in this tough time, no amount of guilt can solve the past and no amount of anxiety or worry can change the future. Take the grounding and peace you gained from this practice and move forward. Work to do good. Be yourself and do what you can. It will be enough. You are enough. Slowly begin to invite movement in, moving your fingers and toes just like we did earlier, rolling those ankles and wrists, stretching, big stretch like you just woke up. Roll to one side for a couple more breaths. Feel the ground under you and know that it's always there to hold you. And then slowly come back to seating, back to your easy seat. Eyes can be closed or just a gentle gaze. On an inhale, raise your hands up and then shine them down. Inhale, raise them up again. Exhale, draw them back to where we started, hands in the center and your chest for our final thanks. This has been a fantastic, super fun panel. Again, I am Riff doing designs. I am everywhere online. I thank you for sharing this practice with me and I really hope you enjoy the rest of your convention. The teacher in me and the student in me vows to the teacher and student in you. Thank you so much for attending. You guys can keep chatting. I'm gonna start to flip this off, but it has been super fun. Thank you guys. I will be doing this again in two weeks on Ponies Online, so look forward to more from me. Thanks, guys.